Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Anderson, Clean Power Wash, Salisbury, Maryland. Uh, I took the plunge, bought the proportioner, working on getting it all hooked up, all the connections and everything. Um, so you can see I went ahead and Teflon taped everything. Um, with the exception of that one doesn't look that great. Um, but one thing notice on here, with the exception of these red ones because they're so small, is that I left the first thread or two. Um, undone. That way you're less likely to end up with Teflon inside or any of this coming off and messing with any of the check valves or filters or whatever else. Um, it's also nice to go ahead and do that all in one fell swoop um, then doing them periodically as you go through it. So a couple things, it does come with these plugs um, so you can either, there are holes up top and there are also holes in the back of it. So depending on how you want to actually plumb that, you know, um, if you're able to do it out of the back, um, that's probably going to look the cleanest. Um, I like the idea of having it up top at the very least for right now to be able to, um, when we need to flush, we can just twist this three-way ball valve. Um, I also have over here all the attachments that are going to go with the booster pump for the recirculator kit. You can see the um, pressure regulator down there as well. So, um, yeah, I'm going to start working on putting this together, uh, do a couple other videos throughout the process, um, hopefully to help anybody that sets theirs up later. So, thanks. All right, so we put a bunch of stuff together, um, trying to match that, which if you look at it like this, pretty well matches. This is going to go into the top over here above the sodium hypochlorite. Um, what this will do, um, once this is actually in there, um, yeah, I may actually have that backwards. <laughs> um, but yeah, so ultimately what I'm going to do with this is you'll have the, um, one line will be water, one line will be bleach. Um, it could be vice versa, doesn't really matter. Um. This has your outlet plug, which can go down there, or also it says you can mount that on the back. Um, this will be over the water, and this will be over the surfactant. Um, so yeah, we're going to get this sorted out. Again, I may just need to rotate it a little bit to get that to um, I'll rotate the or face the correct direction on that, but... Anyways, we'll get that taken care of and Okay, so I've been messing around with the surfactant portion uh, For quite a while I've even tried you know how you twist it around to the left Hear that notch now you can see though here, Let me redo that again Look at how crooked that is. And last thing I want to do is cross thread this. So my guess is that it's got to actually be this. The threads are jacking it up. I've tried. Same thing. It either fit in. So I'm going to put this piece of brass. I'm going to end up uh, messaging the guys over at Power Wash Store. Tomorrow, but that went in just fine. That's perfectly straight up. So I can actually tighten that in there just fine. Um, the other nice thing about this being the only one that's having an issue is that because it's brass and it's going to be the, for the surfactant, um, last I checked, Snotmanade, Dragon Juice, EBC, um, Pretty much anything that I would run through there as a surfactant, uh, apparently, you know, plays nice with brass. Um, the rest of it, certainly it's great with water, and my only wonder would be if injecting any bit of metal from this would cause any issues. So, and that's what I had to do here, because for whatever reason, same equivalent in plastic, just doesn't want to work. And I'm not about to cross thread or jack any of this up. Alright, so as a result of building this valve uh, for priming it all, 
found out that this part and this will end up hitting each other. So you got to take this out. Um, so if you're doing this, it may be easier to, um, again, put this part together and connect it first. All right, I'm going to try it right there. Again, I am very, very, um, be overly cautious just as far as putting this all together. The last thing I want to have happen is break anything. Because that would suck. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and re Teflon this now that it's kind of all messed up. Um, put the outlet at the bottom of this, and that'll be it. Uh, I am debating about putting the outlet and having it actually go back. Um, We'll probably just wait to decide on that. Um, I am going to do the plumbing and everything for the booster pump next. So that will be all set. And then it'll just be a matter of, again, hooking up the hoses. Um, and all the videos and everything that I've seen, especially for the inlets, you want to use clear hose. Um, once you get past the outlet on the, um, on the booster pump, the rest of it really and truly could be opaque. Um, but certainly everything coming in because you do need to be able to see if the lines are full or whatever, how, you know, how much you need to prime and whatnot. Um, again, just try not to over tighten anything because it would not be fun to break any one of the fittings that are inside of there. Um, which certainly with the brass, that's more possible, but anyways, thanks. All right. So we are just about done again, took the, um, surfactant or detergent injector out in order to get this on. This is all nice and tight. I ended up doing one more revolution. Um, getting these back pieces in, just took a 3 8 inch uh, piece right here. You can see that's uh, got a little water on it over the years. This was a little bit more challenging. Ended up um, using a bolt. Um, head fit, put a nut on it, and twisted that. Um, ideally, you get the right piece. This is still too small. Um, in order to give some feedback, it'd be really nice if this was the seam size, if it was still a 3 8 inch um, hex that would fit in there. That would make this easier and need less pieces. Um, I am going to go ahead and just keep that piece in there for right now. So that it's still nice and square. Go ahead and latch this shut. Uh, we are not going to put this in service tomorrow. We've got a little bit more work to do, but going to go ahead and get all the plumbing and stuff done um, beforehand, and then try it out on Friday. See how it works, and um, hopefully never go back to making a mix ever again. Have a great night. Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Anderson, Clean Power Wash, Salisbury, Maryland, working on a seven gallon a minute Goulds. Uh, it's a GBS 7, sorry, 0714P4 uh, booster pump. So basically just a seven gallon a minute booster pump. Um, currently it, it was 800 bucks, then the research kit, which will be, um, and sorry, I got a little red hose about down there. Um, I've gone ahead and taken all the fittings, Teflon them, um, from Paul's video um, of one of his skids. This is the best I can figure as far as the configuration. So um, all this is going to go up here for the inlet and then the outlet will come through here to the outlet. Uh, this is the bypass loop that sends it back in here. Um, with this T, this will actually go out from here to the actual hose reel itself. Um, we've got one of these two will be bleach, uh, or sorry, actually, this will, I believe, be water, and this will be um, mix coming from the proportioner. 
Um, so again, went ahead and just did all this. I'm not going to put the hose on on it till the end, but that helps a lot. Again, I've gone ahead and Teflon taped everything. Um, because this side, again, it will go into this, um, which I would imagine with the seven gallon a minute force, that it is certainly able to handle if a tiny piece of Teflon gets in there. I did, for the most part, put that closer to the edge. Um, one thing when you're doing Teflon tape, if you are going to start all the way at the edge, start just a little bit in and then start at the top and work your way back. If you go the opposite, if you start here at the base and move your way this way on this part, what you're going to end up with is a loose piece here at the edge that could then get into the system versus if you start here and then move your way this way, um, that loose bit, which you want to again just kind of tuck it this way, um, is going to end up being rolled over by the next piece which will hold that nice and tight and and then your loose area is going to be here back from the initial part of the threads um, so just, just another little tip there um, again Teflon taped it all so that way it's all done at once I'm going to put everything together um, again we are at this point well when you probably watch this this will already be in use but um, just plan on putting everything together tonight and then we'll actually take care of uh, implementing into the field on Friday this week so we can test it out with a couple of smaller jobs um, we do have a roof a house uh, deck and then a fence house deck also so um, it'll be nice to be able to go through the different mixes um, without having to make mixes anymore so anyways thanks guys all right so I'm just about finished and unfortunately Obviously that red piece comes out, so this should not fit snugly. This is three quarter inch. Pretty much all of this is three quarter. Um, I do have a one inch um, MPT fitting. Um, which fits properly there. So, this being the only, uh, only booster pump that I have, my only assumption is that with the seven inch, or sorry, seven gallon per minute, it requires one inch uh, versus the five gallon a minute would require three quarter inch. Um, so I'm going to go over to Lowe's, pick up the two pieces I need. I'm going to need a one inch to three quarter here um, and a one inch to three quarter barb here. Um, and then I will be good to go. Um, again, these will be the two inlets. This will be the return um, on here. We'll have the um, sorry the outlet going to the hose reel. This will be the return from our regulator. Um, don't touch this when you first get it, um, otherwise you're gonna mess up pressure. And unless you've got a bleach resistant um, or inline filter, not filter, sorry, uh, pressure gauge, you're not gonna be able to properly do that so um, also as um, they have mentioned in several of the other posts you can feel this nice heavy gauge cord um, I'm gonna buy 10 gauge cord um, big and fat uh, high quality might as well buy the right stuff to begin with and it is nice when the inventors of the actual um, products or system are telling you exactly what gauge to use so thanks Tim anyways have a great night guys